Thank you so much for taking care of Ava for a whole year. We're going to pick Ava up now. Emily and Noah had married due to Ava's pregnancy, and their presence had repeatedly disrupted my peaceful days. They were constantly demanding care for the child and financial assistance, and when I refused, they would incredulously leave Ava near my house. Then one day, suddenly I lost touch with them, and I no longer saw Ava. I thought the matter had been resolved. However, I was about to learn an unbelievable fact. I haven't been looking after Ava, though. What do you mean? Emily and Noah claimed that I had been taking care of Ava. Hearing their story, I began to fear the worst situation. It's not possible to call someone a parent if they abandon their child so they would enjoy a year-long trip abroad. I had decided to cooperate with others to address this issue. It was to protect Ava from people who appeared to abandon their parental responsibilities. When the truth about them was revealed, a mix of anxiety and curiosity welled up inside me. At 65 years old, I, Mia Williams, am still working at the local department store. Since my youth, I've worked steadfastly at this department store and raised my eldest son Noah and my second son Oliver. After I got divorced, I raised both sons alone. Oliver, having a free spirit and skilled in self-expression, contrasted with Noah, who was introverted and struggled with self-assertion. After graduating high school, Oliver immediately traveled abroad and now lives overseas, alone. Conversely, Noah, while complaining about the hardships of working life and living alone, managed to get by. It's been 23 years since Noah left home, and one day he called me unexpectedly. Mom, there's someone I want you to meet. What's the rush? Look forward to it, I'll be home soon. With that, Noah hung up. When the day arrived, Noah returned home looking completely different. Noah, what is it with the changed outfit? He was dressed like a mannequin straight out of a shopping mall. I met her at a store that I went with a friend and felt it was destiny. Beside him stood a much younger woman, appeared to be in her mid-twenties. Caught off guard by the situation, the young woman named Emily greeted me with a nasal voice. Hello, nice to meet you. Uh, what is your relationship exactly? Noah, haven't you told your mom about me? Emily firmly slapped Noah's back, and he seemed unfazed by her actions. Actually, I'm going to be a father. Noah looked at Emily with a proud expression as he said this. That's right, I'm seven months pregnant. Emily smiled joyfully, caressing her belly and proudly watching Noah's reactions. So, you being seven months pregnant means you and Noah are married? Yes, that's right. We just submitted our marriage registration at the city hall before coming here. I thought such news of marriage or pregnancy would normally be shared much earlier, and I was surprised by the situation. Despite staring at Emily, I couldn't understand why she would want to marry someone much older than her, like Noah. Emily and Noah looked like they could be a father and a child. However, I didn't want to cause a scene, so I decided to keep my thoughts to myself. Ah, uh, yes. Actually, I came here today to tell you this. Saying that, Emily pulled out her smartphone from her bag and opened a shopping site to show me. I was a bit surprised internally as Emily showed her a luxury brand bag on the smartphone screen. Is that a bag? What about it? What Emily pointed out was an extremely valuable bag from a well-known brand. Actually, I want this as a maternity gift. There's a fan meet for the idol I support, and I really want to have it by then. Emily was requesting a luxury brand bag worth $5,000 as a maternity gift. Even if you say it's a maternity gift, usually such gifts are for after the baby is born. Besides, I've never heard of someone giving such an expensive bag as a gift. 
Although financially comfortable, I was hesitant about such an extravagant gift. Wanting to avoid negative remarks to my new daughter-in-law, I decided to ask why Emily desired such an expensive bag. If you must have it, I would appreciate to know why. Emily answered with a bright smile. I'm really into this idol, and this bag is a collaboration item with him. As a fan, it's a must-have item for me. Emily operated her smartphone and showed me the web page, where the idol collaboration bag was featured. The screen displayed a young male idol holding the bag, looking like a model staring into the camera. I see, it's something important to you. As a mother-in-law, I struggled to find the right response to what should be an appropriate maternity gift. Therefore, I decided to take some more time to think it over. As I pondered what is the best way to celebrate the upcoming birth, I received a call from Noah saying the child was born safely. Relieved by this report, I've decided to send a congratulatory message to Noah and Emily. Noah and Emily, I'm truly happy to hear of the new life's arrival. Congratulations! Please take some time to rest now. However, I soon received a reply from Emily that exceeded her expectations. Thank you so much. Actually, the payment deadline for that bag is tomorrow. I would appreciate it if you could send some cash. Shocked by Emily's request for cash, I was somewhat perplexed. Normally, I would oppose such unreasonable demands, but in this unique situation, I did not want to add extra stress to Emily. After much deliberation, I decided to send $1,000 as a maternity gift by mail. But four days after the transfer of money, Noah called and the news he shared was even more surprising. Mom, what have you done? Emily's been in a bad mood because the celebration money wasn't enough to buy that bag. Her being upset? Why should that affect me? Because Emily keeps complaining about the gift money, I have to take care of Ava and can't even go to work. Faced with Noah's words, I struggled to find a proper response and sought a suitable solution. Since he mentioned that he was taking care of a child named Ava, it seems that this is the name of the newborn baby. Indeed, this was the first time I heard my grandchild's name. Emily had been so preoccupied with the bag she wanted that she completely forgot to tell me the name. So she's upset because the maternity gift I sent wasn't enough to buy the bag she wanted? Exactly. Please stop making things difficult for my wife and try to help us get along better. But I sent what I thought was a more than adequate amount. I never thought it would cause you any trouble. Being forced into such unreasonable demands, I felt like I was reaching my limit. Yet Emily continued to contact me relentlessly without sensing my feelings, always either asking for something or making troublesome requests. I'm really short on money for this month's expenses, and it's been quite tough. Then use that money I've sent you for your living expenses. She responded as if she was just waiting for me to transfer some more money immediately. However, I chose not to go along with her plans and pretended not to notice by responding nonchalantly. It sounds like you're having a hard time too. We're all in the same boat, aren't we? But please, could you just transfer $500 for now? It baffles me why she suddenly asks for such a large amount of money. Even if you ask me to transfer only $500, that puts me in a difficult position too. Then, could you at least take care of the child for a little while? That way, there shouldn't be any additional costs. While I wanted to support her as much as I can, I also had a job and can't always look after a child. Nevertheless, Emily constantly requests me to babysit, completely disregarding my schedule. Could you please spend some time with the child the day after tomorrow? I can't take that day off because it's during a sale at work. There should be a childcare service in your area that provides temporary care, which might be a good option for you. 
Emily's response was very irritable, and she retorted loudly. How can you suggest leaving my child with strangers? Are you saying it's okay to just leave my child with anyone? I was taken aback by her sudden aggressive attitude. I'm not saying it's okay. But when you suddenly say you want someone to look after them, it puts me in a difficult spot too. I have work and other commitments. After I explained this, the call was suddenly disconnected. However, this incident was just the beginning of an unbelievable series of events. It was the day Emily asked me to take care of the child. As I was about to go to work, I noticed a strangely abandoned basket near my apartment. When I touched the basket, I felt warmth, which was surprising. Noticing a faint rustling sound, I cautiously approached to check. Wrapped in a towel embroidered with the name Iva, I saw a small baby sleeping. What in the world? Is this Ava, Noah's child? Trying to suppress my panic, I immediately tried to call Noah, but his phone was busy, and I couldn't get through. I kept calling Emily, and finally, on the tenth call, she answered. Yes, Mia, what's the matter? It's so early in the morning. Why would you leave your baby at my doorstep without saying a word? What were you thinking? Emily answered in a very indifferent tone. Well, there was a sudden autograph session for the idol I support. I thought you, as her grandmother, would take care of her. But you could have discussed it with me in advance and made arrangements. What if something happened to the baby after you left her at the doorstep, like an accident or kidnapping? I thought it would be fine for a little while. You're worrying too much, Mia. As a result, since I couldn't just take the day off work, I decided to leave the baby at a nearby childcare center before I went to work. Emily started to frequently leave the child at my doorstep. I took care of her on my days off because the child is not to blame, but Emily's repeated actions without notice confused me, leading me to install a security camera. Fortunately, since installing the camera, the basket with Ava had not been left at my doorstep. I had hoped Emily was beginning to take her responsibilities as a mother seriously, but about 10 months later, an event occurred that completely shattered that hope. On a long-awaited day off, while I was relaxing at home, a phone call suddenly shattered the peace. The caller was Noah, and his voice had an inexplicable lightness to it. With a voice mixed with joy and excitement, he started the conversation. Mom, it's really been a while. You're home now, right? Yes, that's right, it's been about a year, hasn't it? All of a sudden, what's up? The call then switched to Emily, and she began with words I never expected to hear. Thank you so much for taking care of our baby for a whole year. Cutting off her words, Noah took back the phone and continued. Actually, I'm about to go pick up our daughter. I was confused by what they were saying. What? Who are you talking about? I haven't been taking care of anyone. Ah, uh, mom, you're not funny. Actually, I'm already on my way to the nearest station. After being away from America for so long, I'm really craving some tacos and salsa. You've been taking care of her for a year, right? Your comment is kind of cruel. Despite my questions, their answers made no sense, and I couldn't understand what they were talking about. Are you saying that Ava has been with me? Yes, who else but you, mom? I can't wait to hear Ava's voice again. Hearing Noah's naive voice only added to my confusion. Uninformed and scared, the worst scenarios ran through my mind. I don't know anything about this. What do you mean? Hello? From the other end of the phone, I could hear Emily and Noah talking. I still don't understand what you're talking about. Ava isn't with me right now. 
Mia, please stop joking. It's hard enough coming back to the country. Back to the country? So you've been somewhere abroad recently? Suddenly, Emily's voice stopped, and it became quiet. Please, just explain to me. What exactly do you mean by left her? Are you talking about Ava? As I kept asking questions, the call suddenly got disconnected. While trying to call Noah again, I saw them from the balcony, running frantically towards my apartment. They were rushing towards my apartment, dragging a suitcase behind them. When the doorbell rang, I went to the door and immediately saw Noah and Emily, both sweating profusely. What on earth is going on? Where is Ava? I've told you several times, I don't know. Why are you asking me this? Because, before we left, we clearly placed the basket right here. Emily was visibly shaken, and Noah looked anxiously around for answers. I thought she would be safe if she was with you, Mom. Since you've left Ava here before without any permission, I installed a security camera. But since the camera was installed, nothing unusual has been recorded. I was sure I placed the basket in a clearly visible spot. Oh wait, what do we do now? Emily suddenly panicked, and Noah was visibly confused. There are indeed blind spots in this security camera, and I'm worried that she might have been kidnapped from one of those unseen areas. After discussing this possibility, a wave of fear swept over us. We should call the police now. This is beyond what we can handle by ourselves. If we talk to the police and this is known to other people, I can't imagine what kind of criticism we would face. I don't think we need to make such a big deal about it. Despite the gravity of the situation, Noah and Emily's careless attitude made me even more anxious. This is not the time for such comments. Finding Ava must be our top priority right now. I'll handle the police call, don't do anything unnecessary. We should gather more information before acting. There might be some reason why they don't want to call the police, but being suddenly told so, I was left standing there, unable to act. Seeing my anxious expression, Emily suddenly yelled out loud and clapped her hands. Oh, I remember now. Actually, before we left the country, I had forgotten that I left Ava with a trustworthy friend. Don't worry, I'll go pick her up right away. That explains it. I went straight to the airport from work before flying out, so I wasn't aware of the details. No problem, Noah. You go back first, and I'll go alone to the friend's house, where Ava is staying, to bring her back perfectly. As Emily and Noah hurriedly left, I could only watch them quietly, feeling helpless. From their manner of speaking and their eye movements, I could sense that Emily was hiding something. There was something unnatural about her words. Emily had indeed said she had left Ava at a friend's house, but it was hard to believe her words completely. Desperate to resolve the issue quickly, I decided to start my own investigation without informing Emily. I visited local police stations, child welfare facilities, and collected information from all possible sources. I found out that about a year ago, Ava, in a basket, had been picked up by a passerby and had since been under the care of a child welfare facility. At the time of discovery, the only clue to Ava's identity was a towel embroidered with her name, no other identifiers were present, which was shocking. Apparently, she had been left in a blind spot not covered by cameras, which is why no one had been able to identify whose child she was. As Ava's grandmother, I decided to take her in temporarily. I was considering what actions to take next, but was uncertain about how to proceed with contacting Emily. To mention, the child welfare facility, it could provoke an unpredictable reaction from Emily. Then, an idea occurred to me. I remembered Emily mentioning that she had left Ava with a friend. 
Perhaps Emily had some sort of plan. I decided to go near the apartment complex where Emily and Noah live and sat in a cafe nearby to watch the comings and goings at the apartment complex entrance. I may get some clues of what Emily might be thinking. To keep a closer watch on Emily's actions, I decided to temporarily place Ava in daycare. Among many residents, I spotted someone who looked like Emily exiting the apartment. She quickly left the apartment and started walking briskly. Intrigued by her actions, I discreetly followed her to see where she was going. After a short pursuit, I saw her enter a diner. The diner was spacious, and the seating arrangement allowed me to eavesdrop on nearby conversations without being noticed. It was unlikely that Emily had come to this place without a specific reason, so there must be something going on. I managed to find a seat within earshot of Emily and settled in to observe her actions closely. After a while, Emily and a man, who appeared to be about her age, walked into the diner and sat down opposite her. The man had the look of an ordinary office worker, which contrasted with Emily's flashy makeup and revealing outfit. They greeted each other as if they were old acquaintances, saying things like, long time no see, and, how have you been? I focused on their conversation, listening intently for any clues. Emily called the man sitting across from her, Lucas, and they engaged in casual conversation. Hey, Lucas, how's it been lately? What do you mean, how? Well, about the baby and stuff. As I carefully listened to their conversation from a nearby seat, it became clear they were discussing about a child. Emily's way of speaking was fragmented and unnatural, making it seem like she was probing this man, Lucas, for information about Ava's current situation. About the baby and stuff, what exactly do you mean? Oh, it's actually nothing. Don't worry about it. But it's been two years since we broke up. You wouldn't contact me out of the blue without a good reason, right? No, really, it's nothing important. I need to go now. Without resolving anything, Emily decided to leave the cafe immediately. She quickly grabbed her bag and hurried out. Lucas, puzzled by her abrupt remarks, wore a confused expression. After Emily was out of sight, I approached Lucas to casually start a conversation. I'm sorry to approach you so suddenly, may I have a moment of your time? Yes, what is it? I am Emily's mother-in-law. I apologize if I startled you. I'm very curious about what you two were discussing. Could you please tell me more about it? Initially Lucas was cautious but he began to relax as I explained the situation. Knowing I was Emily's mother-in-law seemed to put him slightly at ease. You're Emily's mother-in-law? I didn't know she was married. And about the child you mentioned earlier. You don't mean. I approached Lucas, who seemed a bit surprised, but responded. Emily does have a child. If it's not too rude, May I ask your name? Ah, uh, yes, I'm Lucas Harris. Nice to meet you. Is it her child, you were saying earlier? Lucas handed in his business card to me. Yes, exactly. My son and Emily have been married for a year and a half to two years. I was shocked to learn that Emily was already seven months pregnant when they've got married. The child's name is Ava, but she is currently missing, and we are desperately looking for her. She's missing? Lucas was concerned, and asked about the child's well-being, to which I added more details. Yes, but don't worry. I have found her and taken her in as Ava's grandmother. Currently, she is being cared for at a local daycare facility. In fact, Emily had left Ava in front of my apartment a year ago without telling me, and she had already been taken into care by the time I found out. Lucas's face relaxed, and he appeared somewhat relieved. That's a relief. Yes, 
Actually Emily and I have been searching for Ava separately, and she does not know that Ava has been found and is being protected. I see. That explains the behavior. I quietly observed Lucas as he pondered, noticing his gaze drift to the floor. Emily said she wanted to check familiar places herself before going to the police, which is why we acted separately. Afterward, I showed Lucas a photo of Ava while explaining what Emily meant by desperately wanting to search on her own. When Emily said she wanted to search on her own and had a place in mind, she probably meant you. Lucas, looking pensive, quietly started to speak. He began to speak with a hint of confusion. Earlier, I told Emily I knew nothing about the child, but upon reflection, I realized that the child might actually be mine. You think the child might be yours? Yes, I apologize for my abrupt statement. He attempted to justify his words with a bitter smile. So, you're suggesting that Ava is a child born between you and Emily? That might be the case. Ava is now one year old, and you mentioned Emily was seven months pregnant. Considering the timing, it's likely she is my child. I lost my words for a moment at this startling news and pondered deeply. That's quite unexpected, but if you piece all the facts together, the series of events seems logical. At that time, I was extremely busy with work and could hardly share any time with Emily. Then suddenly, she broke up with me over email, and after that, I couldn't get in touch with her at all. That must have been hard. Nodding, he continued to explain the situation. She told me she needed cancer treatment and couldn't see me anymore. But hearing your story, it's clear that was a lie. If Ava really is your child, what do you plan to do? After pondering for a while, Lucas lifted his head as if he had made a decision, and replied. If Ava is indeed a child born between Emily and myself, I intend to take responsibility and raise her. I cannot accept someone as a parent if they abandon their child at someone else's doorstep. I proposed to Lucas with a very serious demeanor. Talking with you has given me an idea. What about doing a DNA test to see? Lucas was taken aback by the sudden suggestion and was momentarily at a loss for words. A DNA test? That is... Yes. Given our efforts to resolve this situation, you would want to confirm if you are the real father. Certainly, if such a test is possible, I would definitely want to proceed with it. This topic came up because I had once seen a documentary on TV about an easy-to-use home DNA testing kit. I was intrigued and had subsequently purchased a test kit online. Considering it the perfect opportunity to use the kit, I hurried home to fetch it and returned to Lucas's place. Ava's hair is already here, so if you give me some of yours, we can start the test right away. Wow, I didn't know such convenient things existed. I'm amazed. They decided to use the kit that allows for easy DNA testing with just hair samples and conducted the test on the spot. After the test, we exchanged contact details and parted ways to go home, but I spent the days waiting for the results feeling very anxious. I sent the test kit to a professional lab, and three days later, the results were mailed back. The results confirmed that Lucas was indeed Ava's biological father. Now that everything was clear, I prepared for her next steps. I decided to invite Emily and Noah to her home. Ava has been found safe. Please come to my house. After retrieving Ava from daycare, I waited for Emily and Noah to arrive. Four hours later, Emily and Noah arrived at her house. Oh, she's already been found. We're really sorry for making such a fuss. Oh, Ava, it's Daddy. You've grown so much. I'm so happy to see you. They tried to stage a dramatic reunion scene like in a movie, opening their arms wide to hug Ava. 
However, Ava was startled by their sudden approach and immediately started crying. Just then, Lucas appeared from another room. You've left your child in front of someone else's house without saying a word, and that's your first reaction? What were you thinking? Who are you? Why are you meddling in our family matters? Noah was clearly overwhelmed by Lucas's assertive presence and couldn't hide his unease. Well, this man is just an old acquaintance, sort of like a distant relative. Is that so? But ultimately, you're a stranger here. Please leave. Noah waved his hand dismissively while glaring at Lucas. However, Lucas confidently presented the DNA test results to Noah. Actually, I was in a relationship with Emily planning for marriage. But suddenly, she told me she needed cancer treatment and couldn't see me anymore, and since then, I've had no contact from her. Noah began to question the implications of this story. What does that mean exactly? Are you saying Emily was using some excuse to distance herself from you? Lucas could not contain his anger and responded vigorously. Then you are now with her, married, that's truly laughable. Despite Lucas's intense reaction, Emily remained composed, casually twirling the split ends of her hair. Truth is, I wanted a stable financial life. After comparing Lucas and Noah, Noah seemed more promising, so I ultimately chose him for the sake of me and my future children. So, you were promising to marry me while secretly dating Noah? At that moment, Emily turned to Noah with a very bright and amicable smile. That's because I heard Noah is a department head at a famous company and he might get promoted to director in a few years. It was like investing in making sure our child can earn well in the future. I thought it wouldn't be bad at all to have him fully support us in the future. That's right, at the major company where I work, we hardly face any financial difficulties. I can provide plenty of funds for our child, so they can be raised without stress. I really can't believe it. And what I can't understand the most is why you would do such a terrible thing, like leaving your own child by the roadside. Since you work for a major company, you should have financial flexibility. Then why don't you hire someone to provide proper care? Noah, taken aback by Lucas's forceful opinion, lost his previously confident demeanor and started to look nervous. Why? Because it's too early for a small child to be abroad, and I thought my mother would be happy to take care of her grandchild. He glanced at me, as if looking for help. Just because your mother would be happy, it doesn't mean it's right to treat your child that way. Even if she weren't your mother, anyone would find it bothersome to have a child left unannounced at their doorstep. That, you can't understand such a basic thing at your age is unbelievable. Inside, I wholeheartedly agreed with Lucas's compelling argument and gave him a standing ovation in my mind. His logic was striking. Meanwhile, Noah and Emily appeared puzzled by Lucas's words and looked at him wide-eyed. I can't forgive parents who can't properly raise their own child. Especially since I was abandoned by my parents, I strongly wish to provide Ava with the best environment. As Lucas reached out to hug Ava, Noah panicked and stood up. Hey, there's no way a young, single man like you can raise my child. Mom, say something to this incomprehensible man. If this continues, I'll lose my child. Are you really okay with that? While feeling greatly disappointed by Noah's shallow and self-centered actions, I calmly contradicted him. The act of leaving your own child irresponsibly at someone else's doorstep for selfish reasons is inexcusable and certainly does not qualify you as a parent. But I've said I won't do it anymore, haven't I? Noah looked at me with a pleading expression, as if begging. The issue now isn't about what you will do from now on. 
Can we really trust the words of someone who has behaved like you have in the past, saying they won't do it again? Then, Emily approached me with a soft voice as if to comfort my feelings. Come on, Noah said so too, give him a break. I don't think you're in any position to say that. Why do you say that? I stared back at Emily with a cold gaze. You clearly chose Noah for financial reasons. Don't forget that. You just ended things with Lucas. Because I didn't want to lower my standard of living. When you think about the future, surely a life with financial ease is preferable. I can't stand a poor life. Then, Lucas stood up, his voice firm as he made a resolute declaration. I just can't accept it. I cannot let a person who would abandon their own child be in charge of that child. If necessary, I'll take it to court to win custody and fulfill my responsibilities as her true father. You don't have the money, and you can't do it. She's my child, and that's not going to change now. Emily responded with an expression that showed she was sure of her words. Mia must think so too. It's about her precious granddaughter, after all. Don't say such absurd things. Just imagining you taking care of Ava is pitiful. Hey, is it okay to say such awful things? At that moment, Noah stood up and looked down at me as he spoke. I decided to tell Emily about Noah's actual financial situation. Hey, you might be under the misconception that Noah is wealthy, but do you truly understand how much money he has? Do you really know? Emily answered with a slightly confused expression. But, he's supposed to be earning quite well since he's a department head at a well-known company. Even if he is a department head at a well-known company, the reality is that he's a subcontractor for another subcontractor of that famous company, which just uses the famous company's name, and his position isn't that high at all. Haven't you realized that? Emily was shocked by this fact, but I continued to speak calmly. Moreover, what Noah actually has is a huge amount of debt, mostly due to online gaming. Before you two got married, he even came to me for help because he couldn't pay his debts for gaming. Being exposed about his embarrassing past, Noah became furious and his face turned red with anger. Why bring up such an old story now? What does that have to do with the current situation? Whether it's directly related or not, I want to put an end to being manipulated by your selfish behavior. When I seriously consider Ava's future, it's clear what action we need to take. That's absolutely wrong. Tearing apart a child and her mother is not something that should be allowed. It's unbelievable. Emily became emotional and stared at the floor with trembling hands. If you talk about tearing apart a child and her mother, the truth is that you tore her away yourself. After abandoning your child without notice for a year, what rights do you have to say anything now? Lucas stated his opinion calmly. I think further discussion is useless. If both parties are entrenched in their positions, it will inevitably have to be resolved in court. He declared. I don't mind going to court, but as a mother, I naturally have maternal instincts, and considering that, you should be the one paying child support. I'll settle for $2,000 a month. Emily acted as if she was making a large concession with her proposal. Lucas, realizing that the conversation was not going to progress further, quietly left the scene. Subsequently, the custody issue went to court, and Lucas was ultimately granted custody of Ava. Afterward, Emily and Noah continued to fight fiercely every day, eventually decided to divorce. Even after the divorce, they continued to blame each other, creating an endless loop of disputes. At first, Noah appeared to work at a prestigious company, and Emily, vaguely aware of who Ava's true father might be, but hid the truth from Noah. 
I guess what goes around comes around. It's obvious that this will happen, as both had too much expectations on financial contribution from each other. Their relationship was a competition over financial appearances. It would end up a disaster. A few months later, while working at the store, I've noticed a familiar figure. Initially, I thought it was just my imagination, but as the person approached, I was certain of who that was. Oh Mia, it's truly been a while. I just wanted to see your face, so I stopped by. She approached with a friendly smile. I was engaged in selling luxury accessories for women, and the store had many trendy items featured in fashion magazines. Oh, this wallet is so nice. Ah. Isn't this? As Emily picked up the wallet, her expression turned to surprise, and she turned to me. Looks like there's a scratch on the back of this wallet, Mia. Maybe it got scratched when you were arranging the shelf earlier? She pushed the scratched wallet towards me, smirking. No worries, paying for it will solve everything. But, this design might be a bit too flashy for you, Mia. I don't mind keeping it myself. I was aware of Emily's cunning ways, but this act was particularly deceitful. That's troublesome. It seems the product is damaged. Let's verify it right here. It was clear that Emily had damaged the product herself and was trying to pin the blame on me as a ruse to keep the wallet. She was pretending to compensate for it while actually planning to take the wallet for herself. I immediately contacted the security to check store's surveillance footage. The modern cameras, with high capabilities, clearly recorded Emily intentionally scratching the wallet's charm with a small blade. They also perfectly captured her suspiciously looking around, leaving no room for her to make excuses. Well then, ma'am, I'd like to hear more about your story here. The investigation into Emily revealed that she had been intermittently repeating similar nuisance behavior from before. As a result, she was banned from the store and handed over to the police due to the maliciousness of her actions. Due to her malicious behavior, she was placed under police custody for a while. As for Noah, I have decided that that I can't take care of him any longer, and I have already cut off contact with him. He is an adult and should bear responsibility for his actions himself. I may have been mistaken to indulge him in the past, but I hope he will take the opportunity to improve himself. People around him and his former colleagues tell utterly shameful stories of him, such as he eats without paying or he pretends to collect donations to steal money. His pride and self-centered behavior prevent him from realizing how much he trouble he caused to others, and he does not seem to be trying to resolve these issues. If he ever seeks for help in the future, most likely, I will be his first target so I decided to move out without telling him my new address. My life in the previous apartment was becoming difficult, and I believe moving at this time was the right decision. My new life is fulfilling. Routine exercise at a nearby gym invigorates my days, and the short sessions are a delightful time for me. This habit gives me a feeling as if I've regained the youthfulness of decades past. I happen to meet Lucas again in this new area, and since then, we enjoy each other's company as friends who occasionally talk. Currently, I'm establishing new relationships in this new environment, and expanding my local community interactions. Now, seeing Ava, whom I once cared for, grow up and actively run around in the park fills my heart with joy. Although there is no direct blood relation between Ava and myself, we share a deep bond from the times I changed her diapers and cared daily when she was a baby. Therefore, being able to witness every bit of Ava's growth now is the greatest joy for me and I am profoundly grateful to be able to continue watching her grow up.